Carl Oman, who is a doctoral candidate at the Oxford Internet University. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. How much of the way we communicate has changed since social media has uh, become so common? Virtually everything, I would say, uh, especially uh, in, in some countries which are heavily dependent on a particular social media. Uh, in many Western countries, we're used to having this plurality of different services to choose from. But we, we ought to remember that in, in large parts of the world, uh, maybe Facebook is the only available social media. So if it would go down, well, obviously, the consequences for society would be disastrous. Sure. I mean, I suppose, um, I don't know, Facebook can be used for both pictures, videos, as well as words. But there's uh, using a picture or a meme or doing a TikTok video, that's one way of communicating. But when you look at the way we use words and what used to be letters that we would write to each other, is there a difference, do you think, in what that's done to our intellectual interaction in terms of using social media rather than the longhand written letter that you'd have to then send abroad? Well, I think, um, as with any technology, it really depends on how you use it. Uh, social media or any digital technology can obviously enhance your intellectual capabilities if you're using it in, in the right way. But it could also be used to sort of dumb people down. The example that we're, we usually make in my field of study is, well, you can use a car to go down to the gym and exercise more, but you can also use your car to never walk and therefore be physically unfit. Carl, do you think that people would actually suffer psychologically if suddenly there were to be, say, an internet attack uh, on a country like the United States and say the US didn't have internet for a week? I mean, let's not worry about the, uh, the infrastructure and the energy and all of the traffic lights being off and the chaos it would cause. But just to look at the way people communicate using social media, what sort of psychological effect might it have for people who suddenly for a week weren't able to use any social media? Well, I mean, so our particular study is not on the psychological effects, but rather about the, the risks for privacy if, if one of the tech giants would go down. But, but surely that, that would have a massive effect on, on the psychological well-being uh, of any individual using these, these social media. I suppose many people would say it, that's because we're addicted to social media. Uh, what is it in terms of social media that makes it so particularly popular that people wouldn't be able to find elsewhere? Is it quite literally just the immediacy of having everything on our device? Or is there something that social media gives us that we haven't been able to have before rather than that just immediacy? Well, apart from the immediacy, uh, which would be looking only at social media as a kind of practical means of communicating. You could also understand it as a way of expanding your, your personal identity in order to uh, become someone that you may not be prior to the, or may not have been prior to the digital revolution. Uh, social media and online spaces opens up for much more playfulness uh, in terms of shaping your identity and uh, connecting with other people which you may not be able to do uh, only with your physical body. Is there any way to say whether social media has been more positive or more negative? There are so many different arguments you can make, right? I mean, I might see uh, a family of Syrians suffering in their homeland, which I wouldn't be able to see otherwise if I didn't have a Twitter account. But then you could say also that you can't disseminate misinformation as easily if social media didn't exist. Is there any way to find a balance there and to make a judgment on positivity or negativity? Well, philosophers of technology often say that uh, technology is not good, nor is it bad, nor is it neutral, uh, which I think really captures that technology will always be there. We don't really have a choice um, on whether it is here or not, because once you invent something, it will be there in society. Uh, so it's a bit of a, a futile uh, question to ask whether it's um, f for the good or bad. Um, the, the question that we should ask, the really good question is, how do we harness the good and uh, try to alleviate the, the, the bad?
You're right, Carl. I should have asked it that way. How do you harness the good? That's much better. I'm going to remember that for the next time we cover this topic. Carl Ehrman, enjoy Uppsala. Take care. Thank you so much.